visible at back am i audible awesome good morning all so this is a bit uh, continuing to the previous talk of vms and libvirt and the kvm world so uh, this is in the platform track but this uh, talk also covers a lot about kubernetes how many of you have heard about kubernetes okay i i guess almost everyone so uh, the bottom line of the talk is uh, running virtual machines on top of kubernetes or open shift rather so uh i my one of the interns in my team is here and the first uh in first reaction i was uh, pitching this project to him and was he was like why why someone wants to do that running vms on top of kubernetes kubernetes as a as a, as a core uh, is meant to be uh, running containers and it started from the cloud native world uh, so in this talk we would go towards why it makes sense for this and uh, cover what are the parts that support this uh, functionality and this tool so let's start so uh, a bit about me i am vatsal parekh uh, i work at red hat uh, i am a qe associate quality engineer in the container native virtualization team uh, i work in pune so hi so let's first uh, talk a bit about the world of virtual machines so uh coming from the bare metal world like let's go back in the history if if you go to 1998 or 2000 and when the cloud computing started the virtual machines changed the world like they were the fun uh they they gave us isolations uh, like coming from the total bare metal thing uh, it gives isolation it gives the flexibility security uh, like it, they were scalable like you can you can scale up and scale down over virtual machines and all the other overt features and all the other virtual and stuff that we just heard in the previous talk so virtual machines are fun right isn't it well kind of because vms feels like 2014 ish the containers are the new world uh, this is the thing we have been hearing uh, so for the people how many of you know about containers like everyone knows about uh kubernetes but about the 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 layer difference of it between the vms and the containers uh so this is a typical uh, on the left this is a typical virtual machine uh installation you would have you would have your infrastructure hypervisor kvm vmware whatever you have on top of that you you would have the guest os and your bins and app and the whole stack the whole nested stuff but converging to the new world we will have infrastructure os and then we will have our container engine for example docker uh and th then on top of that in the containers we, we will directly have our bins so that's more near to the host right and containers uh like they are very easy to uh, run they are very quick lightweight so there are there are many many plus points of the containers <laughs> you you might have seen this few things containers containers everywhere and in the future everything is containerized If, if if anyone wants to deploy a new web application is there anyone who won't who will still stick with the vm stuff i i guess probably no uh and everyone is coming with the new uh, google uh, amazon everyone is embracing the kubernetes world so containers were there but the new game changer was kubernetes you can run a docker run and you can run a container but to run it at a scale to run it at a production level you needed a orchestration tool so when kubernetes came in 2014 2013 era, era uh it 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 became the game changer it, it people start adapting it more and embracing the containers more and more so uh this is the slogan that uh i i feel should be the next thing running everything on kubernetes uh but like come uh, what about the old workload we have been Uh, running vms from 2000 to 2014 16 2018 right vms have got an got us to 2018 they have been just fine it's working for us and now you suddenly you suddenly say that containers are the new thing containers is the next thing but i still need my old vms how do you do that 
I mean, for 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 in, uh, enterprise, they can't just go and convert everything to containers. I mean, they can. It takes time, but they can. But I still need VMs. There are no uh, Windows containers as of now. I have heard of. You still need your old infrastructure to run, right? So, presenting you the cube world, uh, the emerging path for the best of the both worlds. You need VMs. You need containers. So. Qvert will help you run VMs on top of containers, but why? VMs on container, VM on Kubernetes. So let let's see few of the uh, use cases that make that, that that would make sense for this uh, project. So Kubernetes was the game changer because uh, it was able to give a great orchestration uh, ability to the contain uh, to the Docker thing, right? So the the kubernetes will bring uh, like bringing vms to kubernetes will give, will give us the ability of both vms are great kubernetes is great but somehow if we can orchestrate vms in the in the in the way kubernetes can that would be a big plus right uh, bringing vms to cloud native world in the sense integrating it with with other other tools like istio uh, glusterfs i mean glusterfs as a Storage is there, but like the cloud, uh, the CNS version, right? Uh, it provides a m consistent migration path to uh, deep, like s fully migrating to infrastructure, which is simply container-based. You can you can uh, you you can let go your old VMware, Overt, any of the virtual machine stuff, and simply go to uh, OpenShift Kubernetes-specific uh, thing where everything is containerized, right? Even your VM is containerized. This 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 might hurt. Uh, this might uh, sound strange, but we'll see how it can go. And there are some more use cases you can find of your own. Yeah. Make sense? Maybe yes. To bring VMs to Kubernetes. But how? Replace uh, VMs with containers? Ah uh, no. So the simple answer is uh, live, uh, running libvirt inside a container, running inside a pod. How many of you know about the pod? Like, 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 yes. So, I guess everyone has already tried hands-on at least once with Kubernetes. So, this is a simple answer. We'll see in the architecture now. Uh, so, what we need to do is uh, this is the API server where, where, where we, uh, which kubectl command context. So, you see, alongside with that, we have our own controllers. So. Inside a pod, there will be a word launcher pod. Uh, it will be uh, a libvirt D eventually, and to uh, like a virtual machine as a base is a libvirt D process uh, running. Uh, like you pass the image of the virtual virtual machine image to that libvirt D, and essentially runs the VM. Now, what we need to do in Cuba to to bring it to the Kubernetes world, we simply pass it the image and let it run inside a container. And that container is inside a pod, right? So this pod will be a VM object. So for that, uh, if you might have heard, uh, seen in the previous slide, I said uh, it was a CID everything. So Kubernetes uh, brought up a, a new API called uh, Custom Resource Definition. So you can simply put out your own objects inside Kubernetes, whatever you want, and that that, that le lets us define what define uh, uh, de define objects that are not core Kubernetes that are external objects. So that that that's why that's why they're called custom resource objects. So uh, virtual machine will be an object inside your Kubernetes, and you can simply do OC get VM, and you can list down the VMs you have. So virtual machines have their own kind, and you will have the ability to express all the uh, all the parameters you want for a VM, just like you do in a uh, old old VM bare metal VM uh, world, right? And this is eventually going to be libvirt. So you can expect uh, things to be which are in the libvirt. You can expect the same things to be to be in the Kubernetes world as well. So this is a uh, this is a spec of the VM which you can create uh, once you have the Kubert installed in Kubernetes. So you can you can uh, see that. So I have a new kind which is uh, virtual machine. 
you might have seen uh, in the in the pod you uh, like if you were de defining a pod you will do kind pod but here i'm doing a kind virtue machine and i'm just giving the name metadata in the metadata and the spec i i define what what i want uh, and this is the networking part which kubernetes does so this is simply just uh, as a pod you you had pod you had replica sets every every like every other kubernetes object was there now you have one more kubernetes object which is virtual machine and how does it v vm and the pod sit together so vm is actually a pod i mean on the back it it, it runs as a pod right so you can you, uh, as as a high higher level object the virtual machine will be available to every other kubernetes uh, thing so metadata labels monitoring and all the other kubernetes ecosystem stuff will be available to the i mean virtual machine will be available to every other object in the kubernetes ecosystem so the main uh, kubernetes components uh, kubert components are uh, the kubert main operator apart from that we have containerized uh, data importer so if you were to bring your uh, vm data like you if you were to import disks uh, to to kubert you you can use this tool so it's basically a controller which runs on the uh, kubernetes cluster and uh, you define is a, you define the location of your disk as an annotation of the persistent volume so uh, the control controller will uh, see that there is a disk with this annotation and i need to bring the data from the location that you define and dump it to the this this disk and then you can use this disk to attach it to a vm a vm object so vm so vm pod will have this that disk attached and you will have the vm with the disk that you originally had in the old cluster uh that was cdi is was mainly for the disk you can import a fresh new image a fresh new centos ubuntu any any image you have and just let it be inside the persistent volume and attach it to a vm object it will eventually pass to the libvirt and it will start a virtual machine uh then we have one more interesting component that's v2v so uh you i, I mentioned about the mig uh, migration paths to a more kubernetes world so you want to de de decommission everything you had on the old uh, infrastructure so how would you bring everything to the kubernetes open gen so that's where we use the v2v uh, you can bring you can just go uh, give the credentials and location to the vm where uh path vmware uh, cluster select the virtual machines and it will bring every virtual machine disk to the kubevert or kubernetes so the disk and storage so virtual machines are uh, as a storage backend we use the persistent volumes in the kubernetes thing and the good part of being in the kubernetes ecosystem is that you have many of the uh, options in the sense uh, you can you if you are on the google cloud if you are running kubevert on google kubernetes you can use the gc disk if you are on the amazon azure you can use their disk as well and if you are on the open shift uh, you can use cluster fs or whatever you want so there are many options you can use for the storage so you the, that's where the bringing it to the kubernetes ecosystem it gives a, a lot of plus points so the pv the persistent volume is is one to one map with a, a vm Uh, it, it, you can define the option to be it, it to be immutable or immutable, and uh, uh, the last point. So it gives a benefit of uh, having a wider range of options rather than having to uh, being binded to one overt or the one VM specific provider specific thing. So you can you can uh, with the CDI, you can simply fetch the details from uh, uh, HTTP endpoint or. Uh, If you, if you want to pass it from the local host as well there are some options in the working we are also working on uh, bringing the option to s simply upload the uh, image you have uh, on the networking part uh, you can you uh, you can we are, we are working on the istio part so where you can define your vms with the services just like you do with vms with the uh, uh, other other pod or the other cloud native uh, applications you are already there and so you you can also ssh to a vm just like you do uh, in 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 the old bare metal world right so 
you can you can do it with exposing the VM using a service, Kubernetes service, and you just apply a label and uh, you just expose the services. So then using the S using the cluster IP, you can directly uh, SSH to that VM. Uh, we are also working on uh, integrations of C uh, KubeWord with other providers. For example, uh, you you can uh, you want this to be a provider inside your managed IQ. Uh, it's there. You can. Uh, we also have a Ansible module for it. You want to uh, you want to play with. Uh, you want to write playbooks uh, that create VMs or play with the VM objects inside the KubeWord, and this is, which is eventually running on the Kubernetes. We are working on the form, Foreman and the Terraform. So integrations are also in the working. The Manage IQ and the Ansible module are already there. Uh, you can go and check it out. So to know more. We have a user guide, API reference, and the docs. Uh, the KubeWord project is quite new. Uh, it's been like eight months now. The project is in place. Uh, we are still uh, ramping up on the new features like integration with the uh, device drivers, the, uh, the CSI thing, the storage uh, part, uh, the high availability uh, part, and all. Uh, so this this are the API reference. We have docs. In KubeWord, we are op we are on the free node uh, KubeWord channel. <coughs> we are on the Google group. Or just tweet to, uh, at the KubeWord to say hi. Thank you. Questions? And again, did it, does it make sense to anyone to run VMs on Kubernetes? Okay. Awesome. Question answers. Anyone? So what about high availability of VMs? So let's say I need a replication, two replications. So you have said, you told that you have one-to-one -one mapping of the st uh, storage of the legacy systems. OK, so what about the, uh, you can say you uh, you need to replicate the storage as well for that? Okay, or so that storage is mountable to one-to-many? OK, so uh, uh, there, there is a new object in the making, which is uh, VM replica set, VMRC. Okay. Uh, so that will be mainly for the uh, for the uh, what you say. So that that will be uh, the, we will make an OpenShift template for that, and that template you can create VMs out of that template. So it will be replicated across whatever the node or cluster you want, and it will run VMs, multiple VMs of the same disk. And I I, I am not sure about one to one map how it will go with the one to one mapping there, mm -hmm. but the VM replica set as a separate object is already in the making. Or it is already there. I, I guess it's there. Okay, okay. Thank you. So, uh, if you don't mind, can you just explain to me how about the IP management will work for these uh, provision VMs? So, uh, for the for the for the network, uh, you you can define the network policy in the VM object. Or if you don't define, it will give you like the pod will be assigned IP. Right. And you can you can expose that IP to whatever services or application you want. And this. The VMs, uh, so in the Kubernetes world, you would want v to run VMs when you are actually doing the stateful application inside the VM. So, you, so you can even def uh, define the MAC address externally. I mean, you can hard, you, uh, you you can manually define the MAC address as well, or, or you can manually define the IPs as well. No, it, it, it is not something like infrastructure as a service. I mean, uh, we have. Can you speak a bit louder? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so we have a, we have something similar product, so we deployed it in uh, Kubernetes, so uh -huh. uh, like infrastructure as a service. So when you are saying that we are going to spin up a VM inside that Kubernetes or OpenShift, so it should be something like infrastructure as a service, right? I'm not, not, not able to hear. Please be loud. So when you are saying that uh, we are going to spin up a VM inside Kubernetes or OpenShift, so it should be something like infrastructure as a service. People go and uh, spin up their VMs, right? Yes. So. If you so don't define the VMs, will get the IP. I mean, the VM object, right. which, which will be run, running eventually inside a pod, that will get the IP the same way a pod gets IP inside the Kubernetes. And uh, uh, this is not targeted to be infrastructure as a service thing. Okay. Like this is this is the where you want to go in a Kubernetes or cloud native world and still have your VMs the same way you were having previously, but have the ability of cube the the larger ecosystem of the Kubernetes. And all just good good part of Kubernetes with the VMs, so this is the that part of the conversion. We are not targeting the VMs, but we are targeting the integration of the both world. Okay. So, uh, w what kind of service type we are going to use here? I mean, so, 
uh, service type in, uh, in when when i am going to access these vms <coughs> outside these clusters so so there are uh, there are main, mainly two things we are giving the cluster ip and the node ip to the uh, vm that is been exposed uh, is that your question yeah yeah so yeah we, are, we, are, we are, you can expose the both thing okay uh, we have a we, we have our own cli as well uh, like with Q, like just like kubectl you can use the word ctl as well it will do the stuff for you or you can uh, manually create a service uh, kubectl will create service and uh, uh, assign what type of ip you want to be exposed and okay. it will do it for you thank you yep yeah. container that's yes, my first I mean question the, the, the typical uh, booting of a booting of a vm takes uh, takes time i, I have usually seen it it takes the similar time inside running inside a container as well like the, the, that we are not doing anything there it's <laughs> just running as we were doing it previously uh, you can there is there are there are certainly some features we we are providing like uh, graceful restart or like the restart policy and all uh, but there is no difference in the way you do it with uh, vm like you boot up vm or shut down the restart vm it's ju it's just as it is uh, right but container ecosystem is generally a lot more ephemeral you just restart containers yes. very more Conta lot more con containers are containers just mm. just fine that's that's what that's what the larger part of the theme was that people wants to move to containers but you might still want to have your VMs, right? For the stateful apps. So that's where this helps. When you're moving to containers for the faster thing, but you still have VMs, so you can use this project. Yeni would like to answer some? One more question, and then I'll give it to you. So one of the main guidelines of Kubvert, as opposed to other projects, is that we extend Kubernetes. We don't change Kubernetes for the purpose of VMs only. If you think about containers, then when you're moving to stateful containers, it's not really, you know, makes sense in containers to just, oh, I want, you know, more memory. I can't just kill it and rerun it. That's how stateless, right? So when you move to stateful, you really need to change the runtime configuration. And Kubernetes doesn't that have it at the moment. We are working with the Kubernetes community to actually allow the runtime configuration to change. It's a major architectural change for Kubernetes, but it's something they need to do as well, or we as a community need to do as well for stateful containers. And that's how we're going to scale, for example, scale up and, and hot plug, for example, memory or hot plug CPU by changing runtime configuration of, of um, the container itself, which inside there's a VM. But it's a main uh, principle of development of Kubernetes. We extend Kubernetes. We contribute to Kubernetes. So there was a question earlier about high availability. Kubernetes doesn't have fencing support, for example. If a node is disconnected, we have no idea what's going on there. On stateless containers, yeah, you run a container somewhere else. What happens to a stateful one? What happens if there's a PVC, right, with the Postgres database? You can't allow both to access, right? It's corruption right away. So we extend Kubernetes, which happens to work very well for the stateful set as well. That's where, that's, that's where the, uh, the, in the initial slide was, that bringing best of the both world. Extending Kubernetes and bringing VMs in the way that VMs just stay as VMs. You can still use the best part of the Kubernetes you are liking. Yep. Uh, and one more question I have is, uh, so when you're running a pod for a VM, uh, do you require some kind of privileged container? Uh, uh, initially there was, but uh, happy to announce that it's no more. Uh, you, you don't need the privileged containers anymore in the latest uh, release of Kubert. Yeah. Uh, can you explain how it works? I mean, um, Libboard, for example, would require some kind of privileged uh, permissions. To so, uh, the the, conta the 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 container, the Libboard container itself is running in the namespace. So, I'm not quite sure. I can take it offline, or, so, or Yanu may answer that. So, this is actually one of the amazing, you know, features that we got out of extending Kubernetes. So, you need the Dev KVM, right? So, essentially, you need the device plugin. You know, we want containers to have device plugin. We want to, co you know, connect devices to containers. If you think about GPU workloads for containers, they need to get into the GPU. So by using device plugin, we actually got this this feature into Kubernetes, and we're using the, that back to to use that, uh, you know, pass to pass to Dev KVM, for example. There was a question earlier on networking. Same thing, right? You get a single IP for your pod, but what if you if you need multiple interfaces, right? VMs need multiple interfaces. How would you do that? If you wish to have SRIOV for fast networking, for example, device plugin, which again contributed to Kubernetes. Is what it needs to yes, to get the dev KVM, for example. 
Yes, but there, there are, there's also work in progress to make Livrit less controlling. Today, Livrit like, likes to control the whole host, but now these days, I don't need it to control the host host. I have Kubernetes doing it. I just need Livrit to run the VM. So there's an ongoing, very interesting architectural change to Livrit to just do what it needs to do for a single VM and not control the whole world. Yeah, one last question. Uh, yeah, quick question. So uh, if I talk about like I was talking earlier, so right now the, all our VMs are like Kubernetes uh, and KVM based, right? So I assume that the keyword is like Kubernetes and libvirt. So will I still be? Uh, I mean, will I be able to? I mean, use all those existing VMs with the Kubernetes, like managing yes. those? There, there, there are no changes in the libvirt that we are making, like to just uh, be able to run kubevert. Kubevert okay. is more about extending Kubernetes to libvirt, connecting libvirt with Kubernetes. So, so whatever whatever libvirt supports will be supported in the uh, kubevert okay. plate. So same existing XML file it will be reading from. I guess yes. Okay. So uh, I mean, is it like um, already public? I didn't yes, yes. much. Yes, yes. So, so uh, uh, this slide will be shared, and it, it's already in the GitHub. The simple way to uh, run kubevert inside a Kubernetes cluster is just uh, kubectl apply the manifest, and it will create all the controllers uh, on the kubevert okay, uh, so on the Kubernetes. So the product is already available to use. Yes, it's already okay. there. I mean, the product. Project. The project yeah. is already there. Of course. The product is still uh, to be GA in, uh, in some time. Right, right. Thank you. Yep. I think that's it. Thank you. There is a uh, tea and coffee arrangement at level 8 at the same venue. So we will be getting back at 11.45. Thank you. So this is actually one of the amazing, you know, features that we got out of extending Kubernetes. So you need the dev KVM, right? So essentially you need a device plugin. But, you know, we want containers to have device plugin. We want to, you know, connect devices to containers. If you think about GPU workloads for containers, they need to get into the GPU. So by using device plugin, we actually got this, this feature into Kubernetes and we're using the, that back to to use that, uh, you know, pass to pass to dev KVM, for example. There was a question earlier on networking. Same thing, right? You get a single IP for your pod, but what if you if you need multiple interface, right? VMs need multiple interfaces. How would you do that? If you wish to have SRIOV for fast networking, for example, device plugin, which again contributed to Kubernetes. Is what it needs to pa yes to get the dev KVM, for example. Yes, but there, there are, there's also work in progress to make Livrit less controlling. Today, Livrit like, likes to control the whole host, but now these days, I don't need it to control the whole host. I have Kubernetes doing it. I just need Livrit to run the VM. So there's an ongoing, very interesting architectural change to Livrit to just do what it needs to do for a single VM and not control the whole world. Yeah, quick question. So uh, if I talk about, like I was talking earlier, so right now the, all our VMs are like, and KVM based, right? So I assume that the keyword is like Kubernetes and libvirt. So will I still be, uh, I mean, will I be able to, I mean, use all those existing VMs with the Kubernetes, like managing yes. those? There, there, there are no changes in the libvirt that we are making, like to just uh, be able to run kubevert. Kubevert okay. is more about extending Kubernetes to libvirt, connecting libvirt with Kubernetes. So, Kubert so whatever whatever libvirt supports will be supported in the uh, kubevert okay. plate. So same existing XML file it will be reading from. I guess yes. Okay. So uh, I mean, is it like um, already public? I didn't yes, yes. much. So, so uh, uh, this slide if will I be shared, and it, it's already in the GitHub. The simple way to uh, run kubevert inside a Kubernetes cluster is just uh, kubectl apply the manifest, and it will create all the controllers uh, on the kubevert okay, uh, so on the Kubernetes. So the product is already available to use. Yes, it's already okay. there. I mean, the product. Project. The project yeah. is already there. Of course. The product is still uh, to be GA in, uh, in some time. Right. Right. Thank you. Yep. I think that's it. Thank you. 
uh, tea and coffee arrangement at level 8 at the same venue. So we will be getting back at 11.45. Thank you.